Hello, this is Dr. Loach from HumanBodyHelp.com and today I'm going over the structures of the tibia. Right now we're looking at the anterior surface of the tibia. The proximal end of the tibia would be up here. This would be where it articulates with the femur to form the knee joint. This is the distal end of the tibia and this part of the tibia will articulate with the top bone in the foot known as the talus. This is the medial aspect of the tibia. This right here is the medial malleolus. The lateral aspect where the fibula would be attached would be over here. And then finally the posterior surface of the tibia would be right here and it looks like this. Okay. So right now we're dealing with a tibia that is from the right side of a human body. Let's run through some of the structures of the tibia. Starting at the proximal end, we can see this structure right here. This is an important structure because this is going to be an attachment site for a set of muscles known as the quadricep muscles. Okay, those quads will attach right here. This is the tibial tuberosity. Okay. Now, if I pick the tibia up, so that we can see the top of the tibia. And we can see smooth articular surfaces. These would be the condyles of the tibia. Right? And we can see some fossa, some indentations here and here. Those would be the sites of attachment for the cruciate ligaments. Anterior cruciate would attach in the front, and then posterior cruciate would attach back here. Okay? In between the condyles, and by the way, this condyle right here is the lateral condyle. Remember, this was the lateral side where the fibula would articulate. And this is the medial condyle right here. This is on the same side as the medial malleolus. Okay. These condyles right here have spines between them. Sometimes they're called the tibial spines. Sometimes they're called the intercondylar eminences, depending on what book you read, what source you look at. Okay. So these are the structures on the tibial plateau. If I set this down, we can see other structures on the anterior surface. We can see this anterior border of the tibia right here. Okay, this tibia would make up your shin bone, so if you were to get kicked in the shins, this is the part that would get kicked. Okay. Down here at the distal end, we can see our medial malleolus. Remember, the fibula would attach on this side, so there's an articular surface right here for the fibula, as well as up here. The lateral malleolus would actually be part of the fibula, and that would be over here someplace. If I were to roll the tibia over so that we can look on the posterior aspect, we could see the tibial spines or the intercondylar eminences. We can also see back here the soleal line Right, the soleal line is where the soleus muscle would attach. And then there's going to be a surface right here for the interosseous membrane. That interosseous membrane is going to attach to the fibula as well. It's called interosseous because it's between those two bones. And we can also see the articular surface for the fibula up here. Specifically, the head of the fibula would articulate here. And down here is where lateral malleolus would attach. Okay. Hey, here we can see a fibula located next to a tibia. So you can orient yourself as to where it would go. On the tibia, we have these two smooth articular surfaces right there. Those articular surfaces would be where the fibula attaches. Okay, so this is the fibula. You'll notice it's a lot thinner, narrower than the tibia. That's because this fibula is a non-weight-bearing bone. Oftentimes when you hear an athlete breaks his leg but still plays in the game, they've broken their fibula, again, because it's a non-weight-bearing bone. Right. Now, some of the structures we can see on the fibula, 
There aren't many, uh, but here we go. Uh, this is going to be uh, where the interosseous membrane attaches to the fibula. Uh, the head of the fibula is going to be up here at this end. And the neck of the fibula will be right here. The lateral malleolus we would be able to see down here. This is the outside of your ankle, whereas the medial malleolus on the tibia was right here. That's on the inside or medial aspect of your ankle. Okay. Interesting thing about these two bones, if I put them together the way they would be in the body, you'll notice that the lateral malleolus is more inferior or distal than the medial malleolus. Okay. This means that oftentimes when people sprain their ankles, they do it where the foot turns inward like this. And the reason for that is because of how far down this lateral malleolus goes, how far down the fibula goes, because it offers more support on this side. So when you roll your ankle, it usually rolls inward like this, an inversion ankle sprain. Okay. Now sometimes, because there's muscles that attach to the fibula, and they get stretched on an inversion ankle sprain, you could fracture the fibula, and it often fractures up here at the neck. There's an important structure that wraps around the neck of the fibula, and that's called the common fibular nerve, or sometimes known as the common peroneal nerve. Now, if you fracture the fibula here, and oftentimes it happens on an inversion ankle sprain, you could damage that nerve, either sever it or the swelling in this area could put pressure on that nerve and cut off the nerve supply to the muscles. Now the muscles that are supplied by that common fibular nerve would be the muscles of the anterior compartment and the lateral compartment. So we're talking about tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, also the fibularis muscles, fibularis longus and brevis, uh, also fibularis tertius, which would be uh, innervated by uh, the deep fibular nerve from the anterior compartment. Okay, so that would lead to a condition known as foot drop. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.